Okay, as I mentioned in class, um, what I'm going to start doing now is putting the uh, lectures for the vocabulary skills um, online. Um, and the reason for that is so we'll have more time in class to do practice and, and deal with questions um, as we go along. So let's go ahead and get started with this, um, with this unit, uh, Chapter 9. Um, so if you, what I recommend in doing this is that as you follow along with this uh, video, have your book open uh, to chapter 9, which is on page 50. And as I go through it and then explain it, you can actually um, fill out the answers to the 10 words in context and the matching words with definitions, uh, which will help you when you do the online activities for review. Okay. So here's our first word, um, elapse. Although four years had elapsed since I saw Marion, we talked as if we'd never parted. When I'm busy with work, I, uh, when, when I'm busy with work I enjoy, I never notice how much time is elapsing. So elapsing means uh, to go by. And if you look on page 51, the definition that it gives for elapse is to pass by or slip by. And it's usually um, and it's usually said of time. So when it, it uses the term um, slip by, the reason when we talk about elapse is means that something has passed and maybe you haven't really noticed that the time has passed. So in the first example, four years had elapsed since um, she last saw Marion, um, but it was as though we'd never parted. It didn't seem that we had been away um, for so long. And in the second example, you know, when you enjoy your work, you don't notice how much time um, has elapsed. So it does have a sense of that it's, it's going by and that you may not know, you may not notice um, that it is going by. Okay? So the second word is evasive. And remember, this is the I-V-E word, which often signals that it's an adjective. The Rothmans worried that their son was hiding something when he became evasive about where he had been and what he'd been doing. We didn't want anyone at school to know our father was in the hospital, so we were evasive, saying only, he has to be away for a while. And the answer to this is indefinite. Now, indefinite may not be the best definition. Um, on page 51, um, it has evasive, is number four, deliberately unclear. Um, evasive, you can, it may help you to remember it, um, to think of the word avoid, or I sort of think of these two things together. Um, evasive um, means that you're trying to avoid telling someone something. So if someone is being evasive, it means that they don't want to um, tell you the truth for some reason. Um, and that's why it says deliberately un unclear. Um, so it's, it, it means that, that maybe you're hiding something. So in the first case, it seems like the son is hiding something. In the second case, they didn't want other people to know that the father was in the hospital. So they were kind of hiding um, that fact. Okay, uh, so number three here is fluent. Um, to work in a foreign country, it helps to be fluent in its language. Uh, Jamila wanted to hear what was wrong with her car in simple everyday words. She was not fluent in the language of auto mechanics. And fluent means able to express oneself. So we use fluent a lot of times when we talk about languages, and one of the things that you guys are trying to do is to become more fluent um, in English. And in this case, fluent is talking about your ability to say what you mean. Uh, the definition on page 51 is number nine, able to express express oneself with skill and ease. So when we talk about being fluent, it's not just that you can communicate, but also that you can communicate communicate easily, um, that it's not difficult for you to be to communicate. So all of us are fluent um, in our native languages. It's easy for us to communicate um, in our native languages. But when we're speaking another language, we're, we tend to be less fluent, meaning we do have some ability to communicate, but um, we're not really we're not really good um, at at communicating. Okay. So the next word is futile. Um, my best friend 
is so stubborn that once he has made a decision, he, it is futile to try to change his mind. I'm convinced that washing machines eat socks, so it's futile to try to find matching pairs in a load of clean laundry. And what futile means is hopeless. On page 51, futile says, useless, unable to succeed. So futile has this meaning of um, it, it's something that you can try to do, but you're not going to be successful um, at it. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of an example of something that would be, you know, would be futile. Um, you know, it's it's futile to. Uh, um, I can't think of a good example right now, um, but but futile has that meaning of you want to do something you you're you're trying to do something but but it's impossible to do there's there's no point in in doing it so our next word is harass a few students in the cafeteria like to harass everyone else by frequently clicking it clinking their silverware and stamping their feet sometimes it doesn't help to harass people about quitting smoking Bothering them all the time may make them resist quitting. And harass means to annoy. On page 51, it's number 10. And it means to constantly irritate or disturb, to bother someone. So uh, we talk about um, harassing. You may hear this word often with um, sexual harassment. And what that means um, when either a man or a woman is is bothering someone, generally of the other sex, um, uh, maybe trying to get them to have to have sex with them or something like that. Um, but harass means that you're annoying someone in a way that they don't want to be annoyed. Um, so in that sense, it, it means to really bother someone, but to constantly do it, to constantly do it so that it's uh, so that it's it's really a problem and that it's disturbing that person from doing what they want to be doing. Our next word is infer. The fact that the old man left his fortune to strangers led us to infer he was not fond of his children. Since you went hiking on Super Bowl Sunday, I inferred that you were not a football fan. And infer means to conclude. Um, on page 51 it says to draw a conclusion from evidence. So it, it, what conclude means is that you, you come to some kind of, uh, you're coming to some kind of decision, but you're making that decision based on the facts that are in front of you. So in the first example, the old man left all of his money to people he didn't know. Even though he had children, Right, he had children, but he didn't give his children any money. So what we're inferring is that he didn't like his his children, because um, otherwise he would have given them some money. Um, in the second one, Super Bowl Sunday is in in February, and it's a day where almost everybody in the U.S. is watching this um, this football game. But if you you're not watching the football game and you're out hiking, we can infer, we can guess that you're not a football fan. Now, when you're inferring something, it doesn't mean that it's 100% true, but uh, we sometimes call it an educated guess because you're using the information that's there um, to, to make a guess about what's true. All right, our next one is lethal. My father is not alive today because of a lethal combination of drinking and driving. Jake is so good at karate that his hands are lethal weapons. Because he realizes he could kill someone, he's very careful with his karate skills. So lethal means deadly. Um, and on page 51 it says able to cause death and also deadly. Um, so lethal is an adjective and it, it describes something that has the ability to kill you. 
Um, so in the first example, drinking and driving, um, that's a lethal combination because when you drink and then you drive, you, you, it, that has the ability to kill you. Um, in the second example, this, this person does martial arts, karate, so he's very good at fighting, so he could actually kill somebody um, with his hands. Um, but other things can be lethal too, like um, uh, like uh, dishwashing detergent, you know, the, the things that you use for washing your clothes. If you were to drink that, that would be lethal um, because it could kill you. Um, any kind of poison uh, could be lethal. A gun is lethal. A knife could be lethal. But it means anything that can, uh, that can kill you, that, that, that can kill you. Okay? All right, our next one is obsession. Psychologists help, peop help people troubled by obsessions to gain control over their thinking so they're not bothered by the same thoughts over and over. Going to garage sales was at first just a hobby, but bargain shopping has become such an obsession that I can't seem to stop going to them. And the cartoon says, you really ought to get help with that obsession with licking your paws. An obsession means constant concern. Um, if we look at, at the choice A, it says a helpful habit. And really, an obsession is a habit, but it's not helpful. It's, it's an unhealthy um, habit. It's something that you're so focused on that you can't stop doing it without um, some help. On page 51, it's number two, and it says an idea or feeling, often unreasonable, which completely fills someone's mind a fascination. Um, we, we talked about in the last chapter about a phobia, and we said that a phobia was a, a fear, but it was, it was not a natural fear. Um, it's not a normal fear. Uh, in the same way, an obsession is an interest, is a habit, but it's not normal. It's beyond what is, what is normal or what should be expected. Um, so in, in, the, uh, in the first example, psychologists are doctors who... Um, help people with, um, you know, depression and with their mind who are having mental problems. Um, so they, they get them over their obsessions. There's some people who are obsessed about having um, clean hands, and so they wash their hands over and over again to the point where they actually do damage to their hands. There's other people who have obsessions about like they leave the house and they think, did I lock the door or did I not lock the door? And they have to go back and check the door, you know, five or six times before they can actually leave. Um, so these are obsessions. These are a constant concern, but something that is really not, uh, not healthy, not healthy. All right. Um, so our next word is ordeal. Uh, if, even if you are in good physical condition, running cross-country is an ordeal. Hannah came, up, uh, came out of the very difficult three-hour test, sighed, and said, What an ordeal. I'm worn out. And then the picture, it says, Ice climbing is an ordeal. So an ordeal is a difficult challenge. On page 51, it says, a very difficult or painful experience. And I think um, we, we can say it, it's something that, that's either very hard or it could be something that's very painful or it could be both. So if you look at the, um, the person who's ice climbing, if any of you guys have ever um, done that, um, that's very physically um, difficult and would be painful. Um, to do so, it's both uh, it's both difficult um, and painful. But an ordeal is a noun, so it's it's something. It's describing the thing that you did that was painful or difficult. Some classes, I hope not my class, but some classes are an ordeal. You have to go in there, and it, it it's difficult and painful to sit through um, the lecture. Um, or it's difficult and painful to do all of the work that the professor is asking you to do. Um, but the ordeal is, the, uh, is, is describing the event, the event that's, that's challenging. Okay, and so then our last word here is persistent. Um, at first, Tony wouldn't go out with Lola, but she was persistent in asking him. 
Now they're engaged. I am a very persistent salesman. I work with customers for as long as it takes for them to buy something. And persistent means stubborn. Now, stubborn is normally a negative word. Um, and we talked earlier um, today about what was the what was the word? Was it with um, was it with harass? But uh, I forget what it was. Um, but but stubborn is normally a negative word, meaning that you won't that you won't change your mind about something. But persistent uh, persistent is similar in that you it has that meaning of you're not changing your mind. But per persistent comes from the word persist. And the word persist means to keep on going, to keep on trying. So when we describe someone as persistent, it's more of a positive word. And it means someone who doesn't give up, someone who continues to try to do something um, so that uh, they get to, uh, they get where they want. Now, I remember now the word I'm thinking of, a word that's sort of uh, opposite in some way of this is like is futile. You, you don't want to be persistent with something that's futile. Something that's futile, there's no hope. It doesn't matter how much you try, how hard you work, you're not going to get the thing you want. Um, so it doesn't make sense to continue to work uh, at something. Um, on page 51 it says, uh, number seven, refusing to quit, stubbornly continuing. Um, and, and so that captures that, that meaning of being persistent, meaning that you keep on trying so that even if you have failure, even when you meet failure, you continue to go. Um, so in the first example, you know, Lola at first, um, at, at first Tony wouldn't go out with Lola, but she continued to ask him, even though he said no. And as a result, they got married. Um, with a salesperson, you definitely have to be um, persistent because people's first reaction is oftentimes no. So you have to hear the no and continue on to continue working. Okay, so that is, um, that's all of that, the, this chapter. Um, what I recommend that you do is you can either do it in the book um, first and then do it online, but um, go ahead and go online and do the first three exercises, including the sentence check um, online. Um, and then you're going to do your sentences um, uh, for this chapter, the questions uh, for this chapter, and then we'll discuss those um, when you get back on uh, on next class. Okay. Um, Write down any questions that you have and we can, uh, we can go over them before we take the quiz. All right, take care. Bye.